Hello everyone, that's tuning into today's uh, 10 to 14 day video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for this video. Day 10 will take us to the 30th of December and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles. We are running to around a couple of weeks, so we'll have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. And that gets us into the middle of January. I'll get on that for you in a moment. To say the first video today was our 6 a.m. UK weather forecast and we've released a channel member exclusive, the ECM Day F42. Yeah, has been released exclusively for our amazing channel members so uh, check out those two vids if you'd like to do that like share and subscribe on all of today's videos and thank you so much everyone for doing that uh, now, I've got to pay tribute, and I'm so sorry, but I have to do so with profound sorrow that I need to do this. But uh, I have got to pay tribute and say rest in peace to long-term uh, Gals Weatherviz viewer, follower, and active member of our community, Josh Seymour. So, uh, we found out yesterday that Josh passed away very suddenly and unexpectedly on the 5th of December at the age of just 24 and, uh, you know, it's such a tragic loss for us and for Josh's family, and particularly uh, for his partner, uh, Sophie, and for his uh, two very small children, Amelia, who's only four, and Noah, who is just two years old. And they have lost their uh, daddy, and Sophie, of course, has lost her uh, life partner. And I am so sorry for your loss. Um, and, uh, you know, we are sending you all of our love and best wishes and uh, all of the love that we can possibly surround you with at this very, very uh, dark and, and, you know, terrible time for you. And please know Sophie and Josh's family, his mum and dad, and wider extended friends and family, that we are all thinking of you. Uh, Josh was a, a, a very uh, active member of our community, loved the weather, but his number one passion outside of his family was his photography. And through his photography, he will live on forever because his photos were absolutely incredible and amazing. We actually featured one of Josh's photos in the Gals, where it was 2026 calendar and although we didn't know at the time of course now the calendar takes on a whole new meaning and I'm so pleased that we feature one of his uh, lovely photos in our 2026 calendar so we're sending an envelope of love and support and best wishes and good vibes and you know whatever we can send to Sophie and the kids and Josh's wider uh, family as well and please know you are going to be in our thoughts and prayers over the coming days and weeks and months and again we are just so 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 sorry for uh, this uh, unbelievably tragic uh, loss and uh, we, we're going to have you in our thoughts and prayers in the days weeks and months to come and to josh travel well my friend you are absolutely wonderful you're a great lad and i'm so sorry that this has uh, befallen you and uh you know i'm so so sorry my friend but travel well and uh heaven's got uh, a new uh, star shining brightly there's a GoFundMe page being set up for Josh, and if you'd like to give a donation uh, to help support Sophie and the kids, and in memory of Josh, then this is the uh, GoFundMe page. You can find the link to this page in the description uh, with uh, this video first thing in the description. So, uh, you know, consider giving a little donation if you can afford to do so. And I'm sure it will be very helpful uh, to uh, Sophie, you know, in the, in the days and weeks to come. Right, let's move on and have a look at the uh, latest wind from that from earthnullschool.net. So we've got low pressure in the Atlantic, again, trying to keep the Atlantic onslaught going. However, heights are building to the south and also to the east and also to the northeast, starting to block off that, uh, that low pressure. So the low is going to eventually take a couple of days but below will eventually go in that direction start to slide away and then we'll be looking up towards the northeast towards high pressure get it going over scandinavia and possibly starting to bring the wind around to well, it will start to bring the, wow, bring the wind around to a colder easterly but possibly is how cold is it going to get and that is still a bit of an unknown central england temperature is currently sitting at 7.8 that is 3.3 degrees above the 61 to 90, 90 average. That is provisional to the uh, 18th of December. 
speeds of the GFS of rare temperature and precipitation ensembles. We're looking at Northampton today. The red line is the 30 year up rare temperature average for Northampton. Darth above average with your rare temperatures at the moment. We're going to see those up rare temperatures coming down over the uh, next few days, so becoming quite cold over Christmas. Trying to lift up a little bit, which is a bit different compared to what we've seen yesterday, but generally saying a bit below average and possibly uh, a cooling trend again as we approach the new year. Precipitation wise, we've got some more wet weather to come uh, tomorrow, late tomorrow and into Monday, and then largely a drying trend in land snow row for Northampton. Looks like that. So uh, we do see some snow, snowfall spikes there for uh, Northampton for uh, around Boxing Day, Christmas Day, Boxing Day, and then again perhaps towards the uh, New Year. So not out of question, but Gav could be getting some snow in the towers, we'll see. Temperature anomalies for the next uh, five days to Christmas Day coming out uh, slightly above average. The 8 to 12 day boat is going colder than normal. And precipitation and almost next seven days to 27th of December, drier than average. Right, let's start going through chart data. And this our latest UK mate Euro run. Looking big night on Tuesday. Low pressure stepping away to south, high pressure building towards Scandinavia. Same trend as yesterday. So uh, as we go through Christmas period, where well, yes, we're setting in what looks like a pretty cold easterly wind. With some sort of upper level trough coming across the south, I think with that, that might bring the risk of some snow showers into southern and southeastern parts of the country. That gets us 27th of December, still cold, high pressure and more towards the northwest. Is that high on its way up towards Greenland? Well, it's a possibility, but it could be. ICOM is uh, looking like this. So again, high pressure is taking over across Scandinavia through Tuesday, sending the wind around to an easterly, proper easterly blast from Christmas Eve into uh, Christmas Day. That could bring some wintry showers into the south, maybe a bit of snow south and southeast. And then high pressure sinking down into the country between Christmas and New Year. It gets 27th of December. High pressure then is sitting over the top of the country. Still cold and probably some pretty harsh overnight frost coming up with that, I would have thought. Uh, remember, KMA uh, looks like this. So, again, high pressure dominates over Scandinavia for Christmas Eve, bringing in that easterly wind. That's a cold easterly, and it could bring some snow showers and wintry showers into the south and into the southeast there. Then, high pressure remains across the country between Christmas and New Year, with some very harsh overnight frost with that, I would have thought. That gets us to New Year's Day. So, by then, is the high pressure about to sink and allow the Atlantic back in? Or is it going to have another go at getting to Scandinavia? Inconclusive. What about the GFS? Well, this is how the uh, GFS midnight run uh, is looking. Again, high pressure is building over Scandinavia, bringing in that easterly flow for um, Christmas, Christmas Day. Could be some wintry showers in the south with that easterly. And then the high pressure remaining in control between Christmas and the New Year, sitting across the country with some pretty harsh overnight uh, frost coming through with that. High pressure looks like it's trying to go into retrograde up towards Greenland. Well, it is going into retrograde up towards Greenland for the New Year. So that's New Year's Eve. Big old Greenland high uh, developing there. And a northerly blast is about to engulf the west of Europe. And so New Year's Day turning bitterly cold with those northerly winds. Low pressure sit to the east and a blocking area of high pressure around Greenland and Iceland. That would be not only cold, but probably turn increasingly snowy, especially as this area of low runs to the south of the country. We're bringing this strong, very cold north or northeast. Let's have a look at the upper air temperatures uh, with that. So it's how the upper air temperatures look over Christmas. So Christmas Day, introducing a minus 5, minus 10 Celsius ice burn. That should be cold enough to deliver some snow showers, maybe, into the south and into the southeast. Upper air temperature then lifting up as that high pressure centres more over the country. We won't really notice that, I don't think, on the surface. It will still be cold and frosting on the surface, but like at the upper level of the atmosphere, but um, temperature's lifting up, but expect inversion with that. And then all eyes on that northerly. So here we go. New Year's Day, my 10th South Iceberg, sinking south across the country. And then uh, we're well and truly locked into that bitterly cold weather, really, as we extend out in towards the uh, New Year. That's the 5th of January. Minus 
10 to minus 5 to minus 10 Celsius. But, um, bitterly cold there with winds in from the north and northeast. And you would have thought increasingly snowing with that. So cold for Christmas, even colder for New Year. And uh, increasingly snowy into the New Year as well. With Jeff S. Big Dyke. But what about the 6th then? Uh, well, again, we've got that high pressure building over Scandinavia. Christmas Eve, get wind around to the east. Again, there's some sort of upper level chop that appears to be running across the south there uh, on Christmas Day. Might just uh, deliver the risk of some uh, windy showers, or so showers into the south. Uh, then the high pressure sort of uh, relocating away towards the northwest of the country, bringing a lot of dry, cold, frosty weather between Christmas and New Year. And then the sixth set, same idea, the high pressure going into retrograde around New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, allowing colder air to drop in from the north. Not quite a as epic with that northerly uh, and the block as the midnight run was. And six there does let the Atlantic back in right at the very end. So by the 5th of January, turning a bit milder. Of course, we're talking about conditions two weeks away, so you're going to have to expect variations uh, to the theme. And uh, we see that there within the GFS midnight and six there runs. Well, if you're enjoying the video, please like, share, subscribe, and show you everyone for doing that. Drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos and content. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gas Boys and Get, which is great too. Thanks so much for everyone for doing that. And once again, if you couldn't afford to give a little donation to uh, the fundraiser, the GoFundMe page uh, for lovely Josh and Sophie and the children, then uh, that would be absolutely uh, amazing. And uh, we will thank you so, so much uh, for uh, doing that. The link to Josh's GoFundMe page is in the description with this video. GM, again, high pressure is over Scandinavia on Tuesday. Turn the wind around to an easterly, proper easterly as we go from Christmas Eve into Christmas Day. Uh, and again, some sort of upper level disturbance. Looks like it's running across the south there. Might deliver the risk of some enhanced wintry showers as well. And then the high pressure looks like it's trying to head up towards Greenland and Iceland, but doesn't quite successfully do so up to day 10, which is the 30%. But so just cold and frosty and mainly dry there between Christmas and New Year with the uh, gem. And then the ECM rounds it all off again. We've got high pressure blocking things out over Scandinavia, bringing in that easterly wind for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. That could deliver some wintry showers, maybe into the south between Christmas and New Year. Mostly dry, cold, and frosty. High pressure having a go, getting itself up to Scandinavia. Is it getting itself up to green, I should say. Is it going to be able to do so? Let's see. So we've got a nice big Atlantic ridge as we go into the new year. Um, yeah, we are bringing down north. Not quite as epic as GFS Midnight Run, but similar sort of trend, really. High pressure through the middle of the Atlantic, heading up towards Greenland. Cold north or northeasterly winds. And um, the upper air temperature was quite bitter by the 4th of January, dropping in the minus 10 Celsius isotherm there. This is my precipitation forecast based on my ECM run from Tometro.com. So, uh, wet to weather to come over the uh, next few days, pushing northwards and westwards. Then the wind turns into the east, turns drier over Christmas. So, after Christmas, we've got some snow showers into far south and southwest there. And then, of course, we bring the most north north east. We may start to bring snow showers into eastern parts of the country as we go between Christmas and the new year. That's how it looked by the 30th of December. These are the options on the table within the ECM Ensemble today for day 10. We had Sanit Met Office gets us to the 30th of December. 21 members of the ECM Ensembles with high pressure bridging in the Atlantic. Trough of low pressure to our east winds coming in from the north and from the northeast. 19 with high pressure again to the west, mostly dry. Could be a bit chilly, uh, quite cold with that. And then we've got 11 with high pressure, pretty much over top of catch. Your options there, looking anti-cyclonic and cold. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. Gets us to the 4th of January. 22 members of the ECM on songs with high pressure uh, sitting to the west of the country. So uh, that would be delivering, of course, a northerly to northeasterly flow. We've got 16 with high pressure a bit further away from us to the northwest. More of a north northeast. That's the coldest option. And 13 trying to bring milder air back in from off the Atlantic. 
So you put a 22 together with a 16. Looks like the East Channel Sun was a favourite continuation of cold weather in two weeks' time. There is a significant minority going for a milder outcome then. There, I should say. CFSB2 beats a 500 millibar height anomalies. They're broken down into weak periods. The first week period takes us from the 20th, 26th of December. The next week we'll see high pressure to our northeast, low pressure down to south winds coming in from a southeasterly uh, direction. So, turning colder in the week ahead. Week two, looking properly cold and blocked a big shift from the CFS. It's 27th of December, 2nd of January. High pressure between Iceland and Scandinavia. Winds coming in from the east. Low pressure sinking away to the south. Week 3 is going to be the 3rd to the 9th of January. High pressure in the North Atlantic going to Scandinavia. Low pressure down towards France, Spain. Winds again coming in from east or northeast direction. Looking cold and wintry. And check this out. This is week four. And um, this is the uh, 10th to the 16th of January. And again, high pressure is blocking towards green and ice and low pressure to our south and east. And winds are coming in from an east or northeasterly direction. So, I mean, there's no quick way out of that. It looks like that's keeping things very cold up to the middle of January there. If we have a look at the temperature anomaly, we can see... Uh, that uh, week one is set to be a bit milder than average. 20 to 26 of December gets colder later. Week two, though, 27th of December to the 2nd of January is going colder than normal. Most parts of Europe are looking cold as well. Week three is also colder than average. A so prolonged cold spell setting up here, 3rd to the 9th of January. Look how cold it is across most parts of Eurasia. And uh, even into week four, but it's a slightly weakening signal, but even into week four, temperature only is remaining colder than average. That gets to the 16th of January. And I have to say, we see a similar trend within the ECM to F42 down. I've let him cut our bag here a little bit. Hope channel members don't mind. But uh, the ECM to F42 day is also going for what looks like a pretty cold January. So um, I'll, be, I'll be setting up a cold winter. I'll be setting up a cold January. Hmm, makes you wonder. It's too inconclusive and too early to say at the moment. But um, interesting. Very, 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 very interesting what we're seeing right now within the model output. We shall see. And as ever, time will tell. Right, we're done. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give you like, share and subscribe. Make sure show show everyone for doing that. Drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos and content. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gareth's web visit. Get to subscribe to Thank you so everyone uh, for doing that. And once more, if you could give a donation to Josh's GoFundMe page, well, that would be really, really nice. Thank you so much. Right, well, I think it'll be live this evening. So I think don't do Pub Run Live uh, last night. I think we'll perhaps do uh, a live stream this evening. I don't think it'll be a giddy one, like the news about Josh. But like, anyway, we can check in and go through the trials there and whatnot. That'll be after I get home from uh, Watford Gap. So it'll be sometime uh, around half ten, I would have thought. Between ten and half ten, hopefully. And um, so, uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll go through uh, the trials there. Look at the Pub Run, obviously. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, uh, we'll remember for Josh, I'm sure. Right, well, you enjoy the rest of your Saturday afternoon and evening. For this one, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you a bit later on. And bye for now.